crazy world what we can do? We never stop learning. Welcome everyone to Rita's World. Another segment today and I just want to remind people what I'm trying to do. I'm, I just want to have a show that's eclectic. It's like I talk about everything from soup to nuts. And if somebody comes into my world that I, I would like to talk about things, I, I say, I'm doing a little podcast. Would you come and join me? And today, my dear, dear friend is Teresa Dannon. Did I say that right? It's Dana. D-A-N-N-A. Dana. D-A-N-N-A. Now, Teresa came into my world a few years ago. She would walk by my house, and she had this printout of my life, like a bio. Well, I didn't know anything about that. I don't do a computer. I'm just just lady here. Well, she said, would you like this? And I said, well, yes. And you told... You have my whole history of the movies I did and how I joined the Horace Height Show and all this. So I am very grateful to you, Teresa, because I didn't know that was out there. And that gave me courage. I said, look at all the things I did. And I've always wanted to do a little show to talk to the people and inspire people to see the good in each other and get along. So here you are, and you're really why I'm doing the show. Oh my gosh, thank you. My son and I take walks in the neighborhood. Yeah. We live right on Verdugo. And she had mentioned in one of the conversations that she had done some acting in films and yeah. that she had danced for Horse Height. So when we got home, we just Googled her. And we there was a, there's a, a site, it's something about ingenues of the 50s or something like that. Yeah. So <laughs> I went ahead and printed that out. For her, because I knew she wasn't on the internet, she probably didn't have any idea what's out no, there. I, no, I, I mean, it had her address and everything. I'm I like, know. Oh, okay, yeah. we need to be careful there. I'm not afraid of anything. <laughs> See, I do not live in fear. Whatever happens will happen, but I have faith in everybody. So you came over and you said, I've been carrying this in my fanny pack. Every time you'd walk, you thought you'd see me, right? Yes, yes. I had and it ready for you, whenever I saw you again. And it blew me. I said, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Nobody's. And I was so impressed. So I said, well, put your name down on your phone number. I want to keep in touch. And we did yes. after that. Yes. And then you told me your story and AJ. And uh, I said, i got to have this lady. We have to talk to, to her on the on the airways, that's what I call it, you know, you people call it internet, whatever, I just put it out there, but I'm impressed, I'm impressed with, with your attitude in life, and the way you, you help people, and you, you're good, you're, you're behind your son, you encourage him, so it's a good, you're a good person, you're a very good person, Teresa. So, Teresa, tell me, you told me that you, have a son, AJ, and you do, you're not married. Now, how did you have a son? Well, just explain. What do they call what you did? I mean, uh, donor assisted fertilization. And w- did you want, were you like, when I was a little girl, all I wanted to do was get married and have two children and a house. And I get, I did that. Now, did you want to have this baby? Actually, not really. Uh, it was not that I didn't want to be a mother. It was that I didn't think it was possible. Oh, I see. Because at that point, I was already in my 30s, and I had just broken up with a boyfriend, mm-hmm. and I had read all these statistics that if a woman isn't married by, you know, such and such an age, oh, yeah. or, you know, that it's like, oh, a 10% chance, you know, something like that. So I was actually thinking about just um, having my tubes tied because I figured at the time I was like, I'm 36 years old or so, and I felt that there was no hope. Wow. And And then. then. (laughs) And then, Teresa. Here's where it gets interesting. Yes. Uh, One night when I was falling asleep. Okay. And I... You know how you're like, you're not really asleep yet, so you're not awake anymore either. You're like in that in-between stage. Yeah. Well, I was lying in bed with my eyes closed, and right in front of my face, 
appeared a close-up of a little boy, just wow. his face, and he looked to be like maybe around three years old, and he said, Mommy, I'm coming. Oh my gosh, gives me goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> At the time, I was like, okay. So yeah. um, I was able to look in his eyes and through his eyes, and there was this bright white light. And wow. I felt like pure joy and love just flowing into me. Right. And then, then it really hit me what he said. Sure. And, and then I said to him, just in my thoughts, I said, when? <laughs> and then the white light turned into the number 97. 97. And then I woke up. Okay. And I was just crying and crying. It was just so beautiful. Sure. And uh, I took the 97 to me 1997. Right. So I had a few years to get ready. And I thought it would be the traditional way that I would meet a man. Sure. And we would date and get married and so forth. And uh, by 97, that had not happened. Uh -huh. But I have full faith that this child was coming. Good. And I had to figure out a way to allow him to come through. Good. And that was where the donor assisted and fertilization came in. Great. To the picture. And I went to a doctor and he told me, "Oh, you your eggs are old. You have borderline chances of getting pregnant." Uh -huh. And he wanted to put me on fertility pills. I said, "Wait. Just wait. Watch." And on oh. the very first try, I got Is pregnant. That right? yes. Is that right? Very first try. I knew oh. that there was no oh. no other assistance was needed. That and is a miracle, had a, isn't it? You know, it? full healthy pregnancy. Of course. And I've met your son, and he's very energetic, and he's an actor, mm -hmm. and he's he, he's darling. I've seen him in plays. Mm -hmm. He loves what he does. Mm -hmm. Great. So, okay. So now tell. Tell the people, like, there's other ladies out there that, you know, they're getting close to 40 and whatever. I mean, and they really, for I feel that the woman really basically wants a child. It's sort of, we're mammals, I guess, yet. Aren't we still mm -hmm, men? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I think a woman really wants to have a baby. I did. I had that great desire. Not all women. Not, not all no, women. No, not anymore. No, not anymore. Some women do yeah. not. But if they do, so you recommend follow your heart? Actually, that's a, that's good. A good way of putting it, to have faith. Um, if we could back up a little bit to talk about other women. Let's do. Uh, I had heard some story. After I started talking about my experience of my son appearing to me, I started hearing stories from other women okay. and fathers, too, wow. who said that their children also had appeared to them in spirit. Wow. And in some cases, the women like me were considering um, having their tubes tied and or they just had given up hope. Right. And for instance, there was uh, one man who told me a story that he was actually drowning in a lake. And he looked up at the shore, and he saw his wife standing there, the wife in real life, his wife, but she was standing there with several children holding her hand. Oh, my. But they did not have children yet at that time. So he knew he was going to survive, that he wasn't going to drown, because uh -huh. he saw his future wow. there on the shore. Wow, that's amazing. Yes, and then there was an, another story of a woman who... Uh, her doctor, she had several children already, and her doctor told her that if she had any more children, it would be dangerous to her health. I've heard and of he, that. Yes, he strongly advised her, you need to get your tubes tied, that this is the end of your family. And just as she was making the phone call to call the doctor to have that surgery, her son appeared to her. Oh, my. So then she just put the phone down and spoke with her husband. Oh and. They decided we need to just not listen to the doctor in this case and try. And in that case, the little boy also appeared to his siblings. My so goodness. the other children saw him appear uh, to them too. So it was a whole family affair. They knew another child 
was trying to come through, right. and so they did it. That's and he is alive and well. What do they call that? Uh, usually they call this pre-birth communication. Ah. Where so in other words, if you're really tuning into your inner self and you're really being true to yourself, this would happen to a person. I think if it happens to you, you should uh, Go with have the faith flow. in it. Yes. Have faith Believe in it. that this is real. Because I had people trying to tell me, Oh, oh, you know, yeah. you're you're just getting older yeah. and you're fantasizing and, you know, this was just a dream. And I was like, no, this is different. <laughs> I know this was something from the outside coming into me. And, and that was why I, I, I was looking for other people that this happened to, to get that validation that what happened to me is real. Perfect. And when I heard this happening to other parents, then I felt like totally relieved. Can you speak on this to other people, or have you gone to lectures and talked to people? Yes, actually, not lately. Uh, to be honest, once my son was born, I got too busy. You were busy. But I we know. had that few years in between there sure. where I uh, spoke in different venues like the Whole Life Expo uh, oh. in Los Angeles and also in San Diego. And then I was on a radio program called Art Bell's Dreamland. Oh. And that was a nationally syndicated radio program with a very popular radio host. And so uh, I would get letters from Good. people after yeah. I would appear on the radio. So you inspired those people? Absolutely. And I kept learning from them. I would hear more experiences. And then I was on television, on a, a television show called Sightings. And they did a whole dramatization and interviewed another family and a psychologist, you know, who verified that this is real. And so each time that I was on radio or television or had something published on the Internet, I would hear from more and more people all around the world. Great. Mothers and fathers saying, I thought that only happened to me. Oh, I never told anybody. I'm like... Oh. Thank goodness, you know, they're thanking me for talking about it because it helps them feel like they're normal. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because exactly. you feel abnormal when you have a psychic experience. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't think that would be abnormal myself. <laughs> <laughs> but, Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little abnormal, maybe. No, I'm not. I'm just saying that. But uh, I love your story. So you learn from them, they learn from you. Yes. And do you still get letters from people? Occasionally, I still do get some letters. Um, I Like I said, once my son was born, I didn't really have time no. to do the lecturing no. and the writing. Uh, but he is now older, and I'll be retiring in a few years, so I'll get back to writing about it and maybe make some more appearances That's right. like we're doing today. Because you're an editor, aren't you, with a company? Uh, yes, I work for an ad agency. I work as a proofreader and proof a copy reader. editor. Yes. yes. I think the the what came to me after all of the stories that I hear was the concept of do we choose our parents? Ah. That was really um, enlightening to me because I knew my son had chosen me. Oh, does that mean I chose my mother? Well, that's and a good question. I started looking at it from the perspective of being a daughter sure. rather than being the mother. Sure. And thinking about uh, all of my sisters and how, you know, people choose the, their parents or choose a era uh -huh. to be born in or a place to be born in. And I started talking about this in my lectures and I got some resistance from people who were in abusive families. Oh. And they said, oh, no, no. No way I chose my parents. And my heart went out to them because mm -hmm. I could understand, you know, the pain and the thought I would never choose pain. Mm -hmm. But I think in this is kind of my philosophy is that we choose situations to help us grow into the person that we are meant to be. Everybody's an individual, right? Right. And has some special gift to give to the world. Right. And sometimes I think we have to go through hard times to evolve 
to that point. The way out is the way through. Through, yes. They say if you're going through hell, just keep on going, right? Yeah, and you'll don't be, stop. No. <laughs> And, and have faith in yourself yes. and just keep your head up. And so I think if people look at the, the whole picture, Good even idea. if you came from a dysfunctional family, that there was something about that situation that helped you become you. Right. And then give your message to the world. We all have to go through something different right? to get to the person that we were born to be. I agree. Well, you know, I feel that my mother, had, I mean, I was born in South Dakota on April Fool's Day in 1936, and I could, my mother could not get to the hospital. I said, I'm want, I want out now, and my father, he had to help deliver me, and he named me R-E-I-T-A. He said, we'll call her Rita, but it's really... I say right because I basically know the right way in life, and so does everybody else. <laughs> anyway, yes, I like. Well, well, you have to have faith. That's the yeah, thing. Yeah, I you, do. You, when you feel something inside of yeah. you, you have to stop listening to the other people that say no. Exactly. Not possible. <laughs> yes. No, everybody no. tells you. You have everybody. to just believe in what feels right in your heart. Yeah. And I think when you do that, then you start attracting other people who will support you. Yeah, I think so because all my life, even though I was not a student, I, I did great. I mean, I people loved me because I was happy and I was a good person. I was never late and I did everything I could do, but I wasn't the brains of the act. But I had a heart and I could work and I, being a dancer it gave me a chance to be free and I believe in freedom for every man woman and child on the planet earth but with a privilege goes tremendous responsibility yes. Yes. I mean you just you, there are no free ro rides there's no free lunches maybe your birthday you get a free lunch but you gotta stand on your two feet and 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 not be a taker be a it's a give and take world but keep giving because it'll make you feel good and you sleep at night. I don't take sleeping pills or any pills because I'm a worker bee too. Yes. You know? Yes. And I think that has to do with letting go of the fear. Yeah. Maybe because ignorance is bliss, maybe I don't know any better, but I don't care whatever it is. I have no fear. I have no fear. I mean, whatever, whatever will be, will be, and I handle life. I and just, that's, that's great because there are people who are afraid of failure. Yeah. Or are afraid of someone making fun of them. Yeah. So they hold back. Yeah. And like you said, that's not free. No. Mm -hmm. I was at Ralph's, not Ralph's, uh, Trader Joe's yesterday, and a lady said, Oh, there's a diva because I was holding my purse. And she said, The way you hold your hand. And I said, Oh, thank you. And thank you for talking to people. Oh, she said, my husband tells me, you talk too much. I said, don't you ever stop talking. I said, I love it when people talk to each other instead of just walking around with their smartphone and, and into their own little world. But communicate. Yes, it's, definitely. Because we have more in common than we have different. Don't we, though? Yes, because we all have a soul. We all came to Earth for a purpose. Yes. And we should just help each other oh. to achieve that purpose in any way we can. Yes. And we had mentioned earlier how I'd printed out your bio. Then you took that, and that helped you with the city of Burbank. Yes, that's another to thing. To establish your reputation. Yes. And I had no idea. I was just doing it, you know, to be nice. Yeah. And then it turned out to help you. It helped me so much yeah. in so many ways. And to this day, I... I, I go and get it reprinted if people want to know about me I give them that bio <laughs> because that tells a lot I don't have to do the talking I I was always very spunky as they Good. say but I also had low self esteem uh -huh. so there was that conflict there where I, I wanted to be a go getter and do things and yet in the back of my mind I was hearing the voices of people from my past sure. saying you can't do that. Right. So once my son appeared to me, I just turned off all those other voices and just listened to his voice. 
And that was the voice of love. Oh, Teresa, that's <laughs> good. I yeah. mean, that really feels good inside to hear that. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a link of love that connects yes. these children to be with their parents. Yes. And that you, uh, there's nothing that can break the link of love. Nothing. No. And a parent's love, I, I know, for my children, too. And my granddaughter, every it's something that you don't you don't know how to explain it, but it's it's constant with you. It's your your heart is there with them. Yes, when when you're alone by yourself. Yes, and no one else is telling you other things. Yes, you have to listen to that inner feeling of love. You Good. have to allow it to come through, Good. and know that that's the truth, and keep it strong. Mm. When other people start coming into the picture that might not be supportive. Naysayers. Yes. I mean, I had people in my own family who were very much against oh, what sure. I was doing. Oh, of course. You're and not married. Or not yeah, married. there are some people that are very much against mm. uh, the donor insemination. And yet it's a big business. <laughs> Good. Uh, not, not, not just with uh, married couples who are infertile, but with single women, sure. with uh, lesbian couples, with gay men. There's all different ways Absolutely. now that we can bring these children into the world. Uh, and the family has a new definition now. It doesn't just have to be a man and a woman through traditional oh, sex. There's gosh. other ways that um, we are forming these bonds through the link of love. It's a new, it's a new world, and it's yes. getting better and better. I see yes. the good in, in the world. I really, even though we have a lot, of, we have negative things going on, but there are more good people and more good thoughts than there are negative, I think. Yes, we just need to attract them. <laughs> okay, so Teresa, my dear, I can't thank you enough for coming to see me today and telling the world your story and uh, inspiring all of us to go forward and to open our heart and listen to the spirits. Absolutely, and I want to thank you for having me, and you're very inspirational too. Thank you, I Teresa. hope that I am still as uh, curious <laughs> and yes. healthy Yes. When I'm your age. Oh, I, so you're I, an inspiration to me thank too, Rita. You, Teresa. Okay. And thank you everyone for listening and tuning in to Rita's World. And I adore everybody. Thank you. And goodbye. Well, I got a letter today or yesterday from a fan from Pennsylvania. Uh, what is it? Great, uh, Great Bend, Pennsylvania. And he talked about he enjoyed me in the movies and blah 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 my career now at my age to to get a fan letter i mean out of the blue <laughs> that's great it's unbelievable it's, it's the internet it's great it, isn't it that can, wonderful it connects people yes from so, all around the world and he sends a card i'm going to sign it and send a little picture but with the, i don't even have to pay for the postage oh, that's i mean he's so <laughs> thoughtful so I just thought I'd mention that because you said, but that's how we get along with people. We talk and talk. See, world, what we can do? We never stop learning. <laughs>